What's up, everybody? Um, Jack Far here, Box to Box Football. Please hit the subscribe. Please hit the subscribe button, like the video. Please do that. Um, as you can see by the title, um, you know, James, we've talked a lot about there's kind of really lacking like star strikers like there were when like like you and I were properly growing up, right? Because comparatively to, you know, okay, yes, Lewandowski, sure. Um, you know, Benzema, sure. Kane, sure. Lukaku, when he plays in Italy, you know, like there are stars out there, right? But we've kind of been struggling a bit, but then Mbappe shows his face, Erling Haaland shows his face, right? We're, we're talking a little differently. But two, the two big hitters in football right now in in Real Madrid and, and uh, sorry Real Madrid in Liverpool, um, uh, Man City, and we'll throw Real Madrid in there obviously with with Karim Benzema. But the two first ones I mentioned there, they've been very active already in the striker position. Um, Darwin Nunez, right? Uh, let me just make sure I've got his correct amount here. It's sixty seven point five million pounds um and i believe there's going to be an add-on there of roughly 15 to 20 million pounds on top of that as well so you've got him moving from benfica over to liverpool and then the release clause was played for erling Haaland, uh 54 million pounds for him to leave borussia dortmund and go to manchester city and i just wanted to open the conversation up a little bit what do you make of both what do you make of both deals i feel like we would both agree that Man City know what they're getting with Erling Haaland. I'm more interested, more with Darwin Nunez. What do you think Liverpool are getting here? What do you think of the value? What do you think of the fit? You know, balls in your court. Um, it, it's a tough one because I'm not going to come back Jack and tell you I know everything about Darwin Nunez Same. as a striker. Because <laughs> Same. I don't. Like, I've yes, of course, I've Googled him and I've seen him play in big games against Liverpool. I've seen him play against big games against Barcelona in the Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Like, what I see from Jack is that he's a very, very accomplished finisher. You know, right. you look at Suarez at his absolute best. You look at um, Cavani at his absolute best. Yes, he has a similar clinical style of him when he gets into that position. Just watch him against Liverpool. There was two, three goals that were disallowed, but Jack, he, every time he went in, it was just superb finishing, open up his body, finding the corner, all that sort of stuff there. And in that, in that point of view, in the final third, Jack, Liverpool definitely has a player in there. My only question mark about Darwin Nunes is sometimes on the ball and sometimes creating his own sort of goal. And in like you've seen that with what Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, and sometimes Roberto Firmino can do, is able to create something out of nothing. Nunes isn't that sort of guy there. So when let's say chances aren't being created for him, where's like where is his goals gonna come from? And to me, I look at it from the point of view now Liverpool with now Sadio Mane definitely going to be leaving the club. Yeah. It, it, it looks it, like Bayern. Like, it looks like the uh, Bayern Munich. Much. Yeah. We're now seeing a new iteration of this Liverpool team because this is the first time that we're going to see a fully fledged number nine who can play at wide well at times, but is mainly going to play as a striker. So I want to see how Liverpool are going to be able to change their, like to, to be able to change their style of play, adapting to a proper out and out number nine and how right. Mo Salah is going to work with a guy who, doesn't really vacate his position as much as, let's say, a uh, Firmino or Sadio Mane would do. So it's interesting, but I feel like if I was Darwin Nunes, he picked the right team um, to join. Because I do believe in Arsenal or Manchester United, adapting would have been so much more harder now, like he joins in Liverpool, who get these, let's be honest, Jack, these odd players who... Not every team are going to be going for it. When Mo right. Salah was available, not everyone wanted Mo Salah. When Diego Jota was available, who wanted Diego Jota? But it worked with Liverpool. And I do believe that the move that he picked, the team that he picked in, in like in Liverpool, and the manager he picked in Jurgen Klopp, I feel like it's going to be fantastic for him and and like and Liverpool at the same time. Um, I, I think you're making all the right sounds there, mate. I really do. Uh, I mean, you know, Mane will not play another game for Liverpool Football Club. Um, you know, and I think that even if the buy-in deal falls through, which I don't think it will, I think he will try and figure out going somewhere else. Um, we, I don't personally believe that Mo Salah is going to sign a new deal. I think Mo Salah probably leaves on a free contract and goes to play football wherever he wants to go play football. Um, my concerns, though, mate, my concerns, this is not an Erling Haaland proven commodity multiple teams multiple styles you know blockbuster punchy in the mouth we know what we're gonna get type guy here you know and again stats aren't everything 
But when you're a striker, it's one stat that's pretty important, right? And that's your goal output. Now, Benfica, last season, 26 goals, right? 28 appearances in the league. That's really good. <laughs> Anywhere near to a goal a game, it's like Messi and Ronaldo territory. So you're doing something right. Now, sustaining it is obviously the difference. James, just one year before, he played one more game, 29 appearances, scored 20 less goals in the league. He scored six goals and he played more games. I don't feel warm and fuzzy about that. If I was a Liverpool fan, that would really, really worry me. It would really worry me. Because if I'm Erling ha if I'm looking at Man City and Erling Haaland and stuff, I'm looking at a guy like, okay, he's done it at this club multiple years. He's done it at this bigger club uh, multiple years. And also the club he played for is actually... Um, the whole foundation and the basis of what the club are doing now is the kind of godfather of that was the manager who's at my football club and Jurgen Klopp. So I think that that marriage is going to go really, really nicely together. The fact that, you know, especially when you add the add-ons on for the Darwin Nunez deal, James, I think there is a serious, serious risk here that we're looking again at one of the biggest flops in terms of financially speaking, you know, it's all happened recently. He's, I think he's just nestled into that third spot in most expensive British transfer of all time, right? Uh, coming into the Premier League. James, you look at that list. There's not a lot of success stories that you can really go back on and go, oh, brilliant. You know, whether that's the Harry Maguires of the world, uh, Paul Pogba's of the world, Romelu Lukaku's of the world. I think this is another huge, huge risk from Liverpool. From I don't want to call it a one-season wonder, because I want to be able to see it. And like you, you know, you said you've done a bit of research. I need to, I need to see it week in and week out to know what we're dealing with here. But if you're comparing the two, Man City have destroyed this deal. And Liverpool, I think it's a huge, huge risk. A huge risk. I don't know if you um, have anything to say to that. Every player that like signs is, is always a bit of a risk to him. I do believe, like with the Erlen Haller one. There isn't that much of a risk to it. Nah. But I can Jack, I can tell you this right now. When you look at like what Larry Damn Lewis was able to do in the Portuguese league, it was very impressive. And, and everyone would go, but it's a Portuguese league. But Luis Diaz came to Liverpool from the Portuguese league and smashing it up. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes came from the Portuguese league, smashed it up at Manchester United. Yeah, he's not playing great right now, but he smashed it up. Rafinha, yeah, for Leeds, came to the um has came to the Premier League from the Portuguese league, smashed it up. So Jack, there's been a lot of players from Sport in Lisbon and Porto who's came in and adapt quickly. Yeah, yeah, um, um to the Premier League. Even Bernardo Silva, yes, he went from Monaco to Man City, but another guy from the Portuguese league. So talent wise and ability wise, I don't think there's going to be that much of an adapt in there. The one thing I'm going to say about the Erling Haller and the Nunes move is that Liverpool have Nunes for six years, Jack, six years, guaranteed, like, like guaranteed in, they could add it on. Man City only signed Erling Haller for three years, Jack. Yeah. And knowing the type of character that Erling Haller is and the type of management he is, they're going to tell him, yo, run down, through a contract, and then you can go for free in like a few more years. And, I, and I'm pretty sure he, he has a release clause there. So to me, it's a thing where Liverpool have a player that's going to be there for I want to say time. it activates after two years, I think. Exactly. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. But I think, um, yeah. Something like that. But Liverpool are guaranteed to have this player for six years. Yeah. And if and it, and it might not work out, but that's a six year deal. So they ain't got to worry about none of that stuff there. While a Man City, this guy could be smashing up, and after two years, he'd be like a. I'm ready to leave now. Madrid. And then what? And like, and like, and like calling it a day, right? Yeah, we need it, our replacement. Like, exactly. And Man City's hands are tied behind their back because now he has all the control. So to me, I get it from the point of view is that you're guaranteed more with Erlen Haller. Erlen Haller to me is a better player. I would rather have Erlen Haller without a shadow of a doubt. Nunes, from the point of view of long term, is a bit more of a safer pick, Jack, when you, like, like when you look at it. You don't have to worry about the fact that in two, three years' time, you might not be at the football club, um, you know? The, the only thing I would say in response to that, the, the, if the release clause is paid, which you'd imagine it will be, you know, Man City, despite all the dodgy stuff they do, they're good operators. They know they know the price of their pound, right? So, the, sorry, they know the value of their pound. So that release clause is going to be above what they paid. James, I'm going to sit here and tell you that the £85 million, whatever amount it is going to end up being, um, £80, £85 million uh, fee that it's going to be for Darwin Nunez, 
I'm just going to put this out there right now in under full appreciation that in five years is coming back to bite me in the ass. I don't think anybody is paying that amount or more for this guy for when he goes to another club. I'm just going to put that out there. So from an investment point of view, and yeah, that's not what it's about. It's about winning Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues. Of course it is. But from that standpoint, I do look at that as a, as a slightly different a slightly different dynamic. James, I've, I've said this. I, I think, um, you know, we mentioned this in the Haaland video uh, I've set Haaland's goals over under at like 18 and a half. I think he's going to score about 19 goals Erling Haaland next year. For you, Darwin Nunez, how, what's kind of the goal output, do you think, Premier League only for, for his first for his first year? Um, I feel like the first guy you got to look at for Liverpool's goals will be Mo Salah. Mo Salah is always going to be the first man. So there's going to be a few, like he's not going to be the main like option when it comes to scoring goals. It's going to be, can we get the ball to Mo Salah? to create there. I do believe with what Liverpool have in the form of your Trent, Thiago and like the creative spark that they like they have in certain situations there. I think you're looking about 15 plus goals in the Premier League. Okay. And um, I think that's, I, the, think about it, Liverpool score Jack over 100 goals in the Premier League every season now. Right. So he, He's going to do season. something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. And guys, listen, everything I've said, I know I came across quite negative in this video, but again, Call me like, you know, conservative or a little bit skeptical of how this may be working out. I need to see it first. I'm not going to have any strong opinion until I see it. Erling Haaland, I've seen it a bunch. I have no concerns there at all. I have full confidence. James, for you, just before we finish up here, um, who won the deal? Who won the deal for you? Um, Man City, because it's Erling Haaland, Jack. He's one of the best. Man City. I agree. But and, and I do like the Nunes move. Yeah, and again, what I would also say, James, as well, the reason why I like the Haaland one, I think there's always room in football for change. That that deal you said is quite short and the type of character is he can move on. He could love it at Man City. He could have great success, win Champions Leagues, make a bunch of money. He could sign an extension. This could be this could be the striker for Man City for multiple years. We know they have the money. So again, I think there's always that wrinkle as well. Comment section, let us know. What do you think? Darwin Nunez, one season wonder? or the perfect fit to come in for this Klopp team and kind of re-energize re that attack with the likes of Luis Diaz coming in. Mane out. It's Mo Salah probably out soon as well. Let us know what you think. Man City fans, sound off as well. We know you're excited about Erling Haaland. I don't blame you. <laughs> um, drop a like on the video. Hit subscribe if you're not already. And until next time, we'll see you.